Hey guys, look what I got. That's right, I got the Avio Supermarine Spitfire MKVB. It comes with lights, it comes with the suspension system on the landing gear, which is awesome. It has a huge prop, 6S power, lots of cool stuff. In this video, we're gonna unbox it, take a look at the parts and pieces, do a build overview, and then we're gonna do our review notes wrap up at the end. Coming up next, we're gonna unbox it. All right guys, here's how it looks inside the box. I have to say that I was not able to be disciplined. I had to take a quick peek. I took out a main wing, uh, took out the decals a little bit, tried to put it back together, but did not do a very good job. This does not do justice to how well it was packed when it arrived at my door and when I opened up the box. Now on the underside, there are a bunch of different accessories and, and such. So with that in mind, I'm just gonna take everything out of the box and that's what you'll see coming up next. All right guys, here's an overview of all the parts and pieces. Right here, we've got the spinner and the, some of the spinner hardware. Right here, we've got the blades. Right here, this is part of the FPV pan and tilt thing, I believe. And here's some servos associated with that pan and tilt. Right here, we've got some linkages and other hardware. This is the vertical stab. And right there, let's see, let me show you that. We've got, that has a light right there. How cool is that? Right here, we've got one of the main wings. We've got some crazy detail built into this plane. There are our tubes for the main wings, sweet. We have that canopy. That canopy does a lot of stuff, guys. We'll get into that a little bit more later. Of course, we've got a light on top, very cool. And let's look at the panels on the panel lining, rivets, the detail on this main wing, very cool. Right here, we've got some stickers, decals, whatever you want to call them. Look at all that stuff, guys. If you really want to scale this thing up, you can. Very cool. And, of course, this is a horizontal stab. It has a lot of detail on it, too. Awesome. All right, coming up next, we are going to put this thing together, at least start that process, and that's coming up next. All right, guys, before I build this thing, I wanted to show you that this comes with a carbon fiber tube and this is secured with a screw. All right, so I realized that I did not show the underside of this main wing, either main wing. And I'm gonna do that now, of course, as you can see. Right here, the linkages are covered. There's some pieces that go right over top of this. Very cool. And as well as the split flaps. Look at that, guys. I love that. Boom. I really like that on my Sea Fire. It slows down to a crawl. And this wheel is rubber and it is big. I can't wait to deploy the retracts. That way we can take a look at the suspension. And of course, we've got some grooves for all the different scale details, parts and pieces. And you can see the scale rivets right there. And right there. This thing is so nice, guys. All right, I'm gonna quit talking and we're gonna try and put this thing together. All right, guys, we are gonna talk about the fuselage now before we, I started the build, but I realized that this fuselage has a lot of stuff that I'm gonna talk about or should talk about. One is this canopy slides backwards. Two, this door comes down. How cool is that? Makes it easy to install the pan and tilt. Look at that. Just notice that right now, we've got a bunch of detail in the dashboard. Very cool. This is such a cool plane, guys. Oh my goodness. And you can look at the rivets and all, everything, all the detail. I love it. All right, so the manual strongly recommends that you put on the decals first. I'm gonna live on the edge and not quite do that, but you probably should follow the instruction manual as far as that goes. I'm not going to completely scale this thing out like everyone else probably will. I'm going to be a little bit of a minimalist. So next step, I'm going to show you step one. So the first step is putting these two horizontal stabilizer halves in the back of the fuselage here. Make sure to use that tube that comes along with that. And then the next thing you want to do is you want to identify the hardware that you need because 
you've got a hole there for one screw and you've got two spots underneath for the remaining two screws. And it's really easy to find the packaging or the screws that you need with this packaging because it's all labeled really well. And it also comes with a screwdriver. So when I went to install the rudder, I had a little bit of an issue. I had this plastic piece right there. It's kind of dangling there in the way. It was not working properly. I realized that I did not set up the horizontal stabilizer correctly. So I've gone back and fixed that. What I've done is I've put both pieces of the horizontal stabilizer through that plastic piece. And that's a good thing to do because if you want to fly this thing, you have to be able to connect to the elevator servo. And the only way to do that is to put those plastic pieces through that piece of plastic because that connects directly to the elevator servo. Okay guys, so the next step is to attach the wire that goes off the front of the rudder to the port that's in there. You'll see it when, you'll know what it is when you see it. And from that point, you want to give it a gentle tug from the front in the battery bay. You'll, there are two wires in there. The one on the right should be the one. And just gently pull that taut and everything should be good. The next step after that is to pop. There are three different little snaps. The first one you want to do first, and it's actually pretty easy. Just be gentle. Let it uh, kind of set in there. And then boom, boom. After that, you connect that, and I'm going to do that next. All right, guys, before we go any farther, I wanted to point out that this motor, 6S powered motor, mind you, is big and beefy. When you pick up the fuselage, you can feel the weight and the potential energy sitting in there. And I cannot wait to fire this thing up, keep it along with that line of thinking. Instead of adding the blisters and uh, intakes and things like that on the bottom side of these wings. I am going to just put this thing together. I'm going to use these carbon fiber spars, put it together, and I have not connected the linkages of anything yet, including the rudder. I know I just said that I was going to do that in the last clip, but I'm not. I'm going to make sure everything is centered and neutral before I connect anything permanently. And coming up next, we are going to put the wings on. All right, guys, here's what the wing looks like all put together without it being installed on the plane just yet. It looks great. The carbon fiber tubes, they were a snug fit, so make sure to take your time. Do not over force anything. I recommend doing some twisting. It will definitely make it so they'll slide in easier without doing any damage. That is my strong recommendation because they may be tight, at least mine were, but that's a good thing. You don't want it to be all sloppy before you stick it in the first time, right? So I think that's a good thing. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use this adapter here that comes in the kit. It is for our gear, our ailerons, and our flaps. And we've got this little thing coming off here. I'm pretty sure this plugs into our lights and we're gonna find that out coming up next. Okay guys, I'm going to show you a couple modifications that I made after fitting this on the wing, binding up everything to the radio, testing out this big powerful motor. And what I did is I added some servo extensions. I, this is to make it so it's easy for me to take the wing off and on. These are cheap, easy, you can get them off hobbyking.com. And that makes it so I can take this big honking wing off the fuselage and transport it in my little car. So. I'm always trying to make things easy and I wanted to share that with you guys. Another thing to make it easy is I just Velcroed this down in there. Two little pieces of Velcro, hook and loop, whatever you want to call it, makes things easy. And another thing I want to point out is I don't think I mentioned this in the last clip. These two wires here on the end, these go to the wing lights and it's not labeled or anything like that. So if you're wondering, what those hook on to, they go right here on the end where there's no wire coming off like, we're, like we've got for these other things here. So there you go. Coming up next, I'm going to show you something else. Now we're going to talk about the options that we have to center 
the rudder as well as the tail wheel. Now, let's say your tail wheel is off just a little bit versus your rudder. All you have to do is stick this provided Allen wrench in there, loosen that up, adjust it, tighten it up, boom, there you go. And if you've got a little bit of slop with that or a little bit, uh, the rudder's a little bit off where this is, you can also spin that to adjust it however you need it. And there's another way to adjust this as well and I'll show you that coming up next. All right guys, here's a look on the underside of the fuselage. This is where the wing sets in there, like so. Boom, boom, two big receptacles for the wing bolts and this is not going anywhere, very nice and secure. And right there, that's a look at our ESC. And these two things are the big beefy elevator and rudder servos. And of course, they connect with this nice thick wire. Very cool. And you also get a nice look at that mechanism that I was just showing you that's partially hidden on the tail wheel. So essentially what you can do is this is another point to adjust either your elevator or rudder left to right so or up and down depending on which one you're using or adjusting. So that's a look at how this thing works. Coming up next, I'm gonna show you something else. Okay guys, I have got all of the servo linkages connected and centered all how I want them to be. And you'll notice that some are facing up, some are facing down, depending on how many twists it took to get things where I wanted them to be. And I highly recommend after doing that process using needle nose pliers. It was not bad at all, but the right tool for the job can certainly smooth things out. Coming up next, I am gonna show you the super scale servo covers installed. All right guys, as you can see or not see, the servos have been covered up and I also took the liberty while the glue was drying, the foam tack was drying, that's what I used, to add some of these other accessories on here to really scale out the bottom of the wing. It looks awesome guys. So I also took the liberty, took the time to add the exhaust on here and then I also built out the prop and I'm not sure if this video footage is doing the prop size justice but it is flipping huge like that's my hand and it just dwarfs my hand all right I'm going to install this prop oh before actually before I proceed on I want to point out a couple things about this prop one there are a lot of screws holding this down the prop blades are three different pieces and they're designed to sit in just one specific direction. So it's really, really hard to mess this up. One tip that I do have is to do one screw, tighten one screw at a time, kind of like when you put lug nuts on a tire on a car. That way you get a nice symmetrical balance so when it's spinning at high RPM that you don't get any vibration. Keeps things nice and balanced. That's what I'm thinking of doing. One other thing before I actually mount this on there. This has some indentations that match up perfectly with the way that the motor is set up. So this is going to slide on there perfectly and it'll be a great fit. Coming up next, you're going to see that completely installed with a spinner on it. All right, so here we go. It took me just a very short period of time to put this prop on. A few quick turns with the crescent wrench and it feels extremely solid. I love that. A few screws with the screwdriver. It's kind of a long screw boltish sort of a thing that holds the cone on. A little bit like my E-Flight pits, only this is so much more rugged and heavy duty it's not even funny. And this is actually fit to, made to go together so that is another difference. I wanna do kind of a quick little tour a little lighting tour. Reds never show up great, but I gotta show that anyway. And there's a green, very cool. So coming up next, I'm gonna shut out the lights and we are gonna have a good look at the lights. So here we have the lights throwing off an absolute ton of light. So if you look up top there, that top navigation light on the top of the fuse, 
absolutely throw in some serious light. That is very, very cool. There we go. That green just is throwing some major light. The red as well against my light box. Extremely cool. All right. When we come back, I am going to do a motor test, a prop test, so you can see just how impressive this big thing is when it's swinging. All right, guys, we're gonna do a prop test, but before we do that, I'm gonna show you the ailerons. Then I'm gonna show you the front view of when the flaps are deployed. Very scale, very cool, very scale, I like it. And now we're gonna do a quick little prop test now this thing is big, burly, and on 6S power, so I'm just gonna give it a little bit. I just wanna show you how impressive this is spinning. Oh my goodness. And that was only 14%, guys. Oh my goodness. All right, coming up next, I'm gonna show you a rear view of the control surfaces moving. Here we have a reverse angle of what you just saw. Now, there you go for control surfaces. This is 100% for everything. So as you can see, there is a lot of range of motion. Both sides, guys, very cool. Now I set the flaps up very conservatively. You can actually go about 90 degrees with the split flaps all the way down. Just for this demonstration, I wanted to go nice and conservative. The setup in the radio was very simple, very easy. Uh, I did add a little sub trim to make sure that the flaps went up nice and flush. But other than that, everything was very straightforward, very easy. And of course, sub trim, that's pretty basic too, right? If you're flying something like this and you're not familiar with sub trim, you probably should learn about it. Coming up next, we are going to take a look at the sprung landing gear. Now we're going to do a retrax test. Oh my, do those look good, guys. I'm going to shift things a little bit, and then we're gonna take a closer look at the sprung landing gear itself. But let's pop this thing up and down a few more times. Perfect, everything looks great. Now we're gonna take a closer look. I hope you guys find this angle helpful. I set it up so you could see both landing gear, both tires, and the retrack, or at least the majority of the retrack. But the most important thing I wanted to show you was the travel, the range of motion on this landing gear. Coming up next, we're gonna do our review notes wrap up. All right, guys, as you can see, I added some scale details so we could do our pros and cons. And let's get right into our pros and cons. As far as the pros go, this thing is clearly big and beautiful. This is a queen size bed and it makes it look like a friggin' twin. Awesome. The suspension on the main landing gear, that travel, that range of motion is awesome. I love the lights, nice and bright, very cool. The split flaps, seeing that deployed on a Spitfire is always impressive. I love the range, or the battery size range that you can use in this. 6S power, swinging that big old prop, awesome. The pan and tilt FPV capability, that is something I'm gonna make a video for in the future, so expect me to circle back on that. I love FPV, so awesome. And the scale details like the sliding canopy door, that is so awesome, I love it. Now as far as the cons go, I don't see anything that sticks out to me right now, but check the description of the video and I will absolutely add cons as they appear. But right now I just, out of the box, I don't see anything that's glaring, anything that, that's really worth noting. So with all that being said, like, comment, and subscribe. And GB Linden, out.